Hi guys, if you're driving down the road at 60 miles an hour and it looks a little bit like this... Oh my god, I'm gonna die! Then the chances are you may have an issue with your caster angle or the caster angle of suspension on the front of your bug. It's a really simple thing to fix and that's what we're going to talk about today. Caster shims. So I used to own an old 1970 1500 bug which was swing axle and front beam. Um, and that beetle had been completely rebuilt, I did a new suspension up front, new dampers, everything had been tracked. And on the motorway, it was a nightmare. Couldn't keep it in a straight line. So at full chat, trying to keep it between the straight, the, the white lines um, was just dangerous, to be quite frank. Um, and I always put it down to such as the little skinny tyres and stuff on there. Um, and I never really knew why. And I think if I knew what I know now, it'd have been a relatively easy fix. Uh, fast forward 20 years, and then I've got beef. Beef will sit at 120. And you don't even have to touch the steering wheel. It's completely and utterly stable. And there's one big difference between those two beetles, and that is the height at the front. So both beetles have been lowered about a spline at the back-ish, um, whereas beef has just got dot spindles on the front, so it's about the same front to back, how much it's been lowered. Whereas the old 1500, it was on the floor. Um, it was a real nose-down rake, and that's why I liked it. Um, but I think that was the cause of my problems. And I say, I think caster shims would have been a really easy fix if I'd have known about them back then. But before we say these are going to fix everything, there's a few other things we're going to check for first. So we'll just run through them now. Now those who have got a keen eye can probably see that the, uh, the tracking on this beam would be way out. <laughs> that definitely needs sorting out. Now caster would generally be a different symptom to tracking. So tracking, if it's out, it tends to follow one way or the other. Um, so it tends to go to one side or the other. And obviously you get excessive wear on your tyres and stuff uh, in one place or another. Whereas if you've got a caster issue and your tracking is good, generally it will follow whatever is in the road. So it doesn't go to one side, it'll go to either side, no matter where that bump is or uh, where that lean in the road is. So the major symptoms of excessive caster angle are basically, as I mentioned before, it tracks along things on the road. So on the motorway, you cannot keep in a straight line because it just follows the bumps and divots and leans in the road um, and it makes it unstable at speed. Um, the other major symptom is that it doesn't auto center. It's not the only reason for it, but say it doesn't all it doesn't auto center by itself. So you let go of the steering wheel, and normally a car returns back to the center point. Um, but when your caster's off, it doesn't tend to do that. Um, so first thing you need to check, though, you can't just blame the caster. You need to make sure you've got good trout ends, or your, your ball joints are all good, um, or your link pins and stuff. Because um, if this spindle's moving around, that's going to follow bumps in the road, and it's going to throw your steering off as well. Uh, any movement in that other than what should be there isn't good. Um, obviously you need to make sure you've got no excessive wear in your, in your steering box uh, and this is in good condition, your rubber rings in good, good condition and also very importantly which is missing from here is your steering damper. Um, so worn out steering damper and you will then tend to find your steering jumps into holes and stuff as well uh, when you go over bumps and things. Um, but yeah if they're all in good condition then uh, you could start looking at caster related issues, especially as I mentioned before, if the front of your car is pretty nose down. So we have a ball joint beetle, our top ball joint here, and one down the bottom. And if you imagine a straight line through the centre of those ball joints, or if it's kingpin beetle straight through the pins, um, that's your zero line or your vertical line. Uh, now the caster angle is basically a relationship between your axle and that vertical line. Uh, you can see if I change the suspension, if I lower the beetle, it changes where the axle is relative to the bottom ball joint, if you watch. So the axle changes its position over the zero line. I've got a spirit level on my front beam, top and bottom bar here. And right now, it's pretty much level. So now effectively, I've lowered the front of my beetle, or raised the rear, which is the same thing. Um, and you may be able to see with the yellow spirit level, the angle change between the top and the bottom uh, beam and also you can see the bubble on the spirit level is planted right up in that top corner So our bottom beam is now further in than our top beam. It's altered the caster angle So we need to correct that now to do that We're going to use a caster shim the caster shim simply bolts behind the back of the beam and it means the bottom beam comes out again um, Effectively making it vertical to the top one so we go back to a, a vertical position and hopefully we retain our caster angle on our suspension and it still keeps working nicely so I'll show you how to do that next. So I'll add a few links in the description below where you can buy these parts from the major suppliers, but through eBay. 
And you'll basically you need a pair of caster shims look like that, nice little aluminium pieces. I like them, they're really nice actually. That's a bit of metal. Uh, and I highly recommend you get a new bolt set. Um, you can use your factory standard ones for the short ones, uh, but I got four brand new ones, hopefully correct tensile grade, which we'll talk about. Um, and you get two standard length ones, and you get two that are slightly longer, they're about 12mm longer. Um, and that means when you've got the shimmers behind the back of the beam, you've got plenty of thread going into your frame head. And I'll show you again at some point in this video why that's important. Fitting the caster shims is super simple. All you need is a 19mm socket uh, or spanner. You want to undo both your bottom beam bolts. Uh, the top one also needs loosening at both sides, uh, just to allow the, the beam to rock a little bit. But assuming it's attached to your car, don't go crazy. You don't want to be uh, dropping the beam off the front of your car and damaging track rods and stuff. Now, if it's been on for a while, uh, it could well be stuck to the frame head a little bit. So you may need a, a soft mallet or a wooden mallet just to give it a tap. Just to knock it off the frame head. Uh, and then we'll go around the back. So once you can get your beam to lean out a little bit, like so, get your shim, and it quite simply just slides behind the back of the beam there. A little bit fiddly. Make sure it's all the way in and seated nice and square. And do that on both sides. I have heard people say you can use a standard length bolt with a caster shim behind it. Now this is actually an aftermarket bolt, I don't have an original one to compare it to, but it should be standard length. If I take that washer off, and we pop it in the hole, on the bottom beam where the caster shim is, I pushed it up to where the threads are, stuck out there is about 8mm. So when I crank, crank that down, it's going to go down by 8, 10, maybe 12mm uh, into the frame head. And in my opinion, that's not enough. Um, so as a rule of thumb, a 12mm bolt should have at least 12mm thread going into the hole. Um, and you really are close to that minimum limit. Um, and it's something like this, a frame head, you want plenty of thread in there. Especially if it comes loose, you want a bit of warning before it actually comes out. Um, yeah, so in my opinion, if this is the same length as a standard factory bolt, it's not long enough to be used with a shim. This is one of the extender bolts that comes with the shim kit. I'll pop that in there. And I've got a fair amount of steel stuck out there now. So all you need to do now is make sure that the thread doesn't bottom out before the uh, beam is bolted down. So we're just going to clamp it down. So the extended bolt is clamped down and you can see there's a small amount of thread sticking out the front of the frame head still. And that's a good thing. So I've got plenty of meat going into my thread. Um, I know it's not bottomed out on the actual insert itself, so the thread's not bottomed out. And we're clamped down with plenty of warning should that come loose before it actually falls off. So in my opinion, if you're going to do this, you're going to put even a single shim on there, you need to get one of the extended bolts that comes with the kit. Uh, and for the sake of a few quid, it just isn't worth risking a shorter bolt in my opinion. Once everything's snug down and you're happy it's all square, you want to grab your torque wrench and you want to nip up these bolts to 36 foot pounds. So the factory setting for these bolts is 36 foot pounds. Um, when you do it, it doesn't feel like it's very tight <laughs> and it's a pretty major piece of suspension to be hanging off the front of your car as well. Um, there is suggestion online that 45 is a better figure uh, or figures around that. Um, but it's not something that I'm going to recommend because it's not a factory standard, basically. Um, and I don't want to cause anyone to have an accident. Um, also, as unlikely as it is, um, you don't need to shear a bolt off. But more importantly, you don't need to be pulling the thread inserts out of the back of your frame head. Um, because that's a, a pretty tricky fix. Um, if they're actually pulling out that easily, you've probably got problems in the frame head anyway that you want to rectify. Uh, it's a pretty important safety aspect of the vehicle. <laughs> Um, so yeah, for me, 36, maybe a smidge more, but 36 foot pounds. Um, but if you guys are using more, I'd love to hear in the comments. Uh, and if you want to investigate uh, higher torque setting, I shall leave that with you. Please make sure you buy your bolts from a reputable supplier. Um, I wanted to know what grade steel I should be using. I actually spent about an hour online trying to find a definitive answer for this, and I couldn't. Um, I believe the factory bolt spec is 8.8 .8 steel. Um, however, when I checked my kits, because I have two, because I lost one and then found it again, um, these ones came 
and they're 10.9s. <laughs> so they're, I believe, a harder, uh, less flexible steel. And these ones, you can see, are 8.8. So I think they're, as they came out of the factory, and these are, let's say, a stronger, less flexible, possibly, um, bolt. Now, in terms of engineering, obviously, bolts are sometimes great because sometimes you need some flexibility in things um, rather than just being able to crank down as hard as possible. Um, but I'm assuming with an old Volkswagen that none of that applies. Um, it's purely about being strong enough to be able to crank down to the correct torque settings and it not shear off. But if there's an expert out there on bolts and stuff, I'd love to know whether they think an 8.8 .8 or a 10.9 is the best option and why. So please, please post it below in the comments because I like to learn new things. But more of the story, make sure you buy these from a reputable supplier because you don't want these things failing. It could be pretty catastrophic. So hopefully this will help some people who have been suffering with stability at top end. Um, so it's such a quick, easy, cheap thing to do, even if it doesn't fix it and it's something else, you can always take it out again. It doesn't take long to, to do. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a no-brainer really to give it a try. Uh, it's certainly cheaper than paying for tracking and stuff. Um, there is a small downside to having this fitted. So basically when you fit the caster shims, your steering is going to get a little bit heavier. Um, it's not in a big way um, and the Beetle suspension is pretty light to start, to be honest. Uh, but you will notice a, a slight increase in how heavy the steering is, but I think it's a small price to pay for keeping it a straight line uh, when you're on that motorway. So at least you get to your destination without bursting into a ball of flames. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Hope that helps. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. <laughs>